Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we have the usual suspects. We got Dude Buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? I am great, Mark. The, saw my first snowflakes today in Wisconsin. Okay, so I've, I've read up on snowflakes. I don't know exactly what those are. <laughs> but nice. How can that Very be a nice. good thing? How can that be a good thing? No, it's not. It's brutal. Horrible. I, I mean, Tate, and I are so, Tate, Scott, and I are so tired of shoveling sun. We've got the, the <laughs> Zen Master, Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm happy to be here. How are you? Good, good. It's good to see you. We got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. No snowflakes here. 75 degrees today. All is well. Nice. And I assume you're not going to enter into all you can eat rib competition no no okay not at all i love it when you call me big papa tay litchfield how are you i'm excited because we have boot camp coming up in uh what two minus four days three days three days yeah three days and i know this is going to come out after the after boot camp actually happened so it was so good everybody who didn't attend missed out so much so much yeah, for those of you who didn't who missed out, go to landgeek.com forward slash bootcamp and uh, and start registering for the for the next one in January, two thousand twenty one. This is our last one of the year. Kind of crazy. Um, you know, it'd be great, Tate, if we could just look over your shoulder and watch you work. Go to landgeek.com forward slash lots. Get on that sort of Netflixy series and watch Tate work. And of course, we got the brain, the professor, your flights go Sherpa, Scott Todd, scotttodd.net. Landmoto.com, learn anything about anything, InvestorNinjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? Uh, I'm mad at you. Very yeah. mad at you. All right. Oh. So great. a lot of you, I don't know if, if everybody knows, but Scott has been voxing us the last month, is it maybe a month or two. Yeah, month. Hey, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm out on the golf course. He's taking up golf. Right. And um, so I went and visited my son for Parents Weekend in Tucson uh, at U of A. And he is getting into golf and he's playing golf with his friends. So I thought, oh, I'm going to get into golf, too. So we go to this beautiful course and um, we're just going to go on the driving range, just going to practice and the putting range. And uh, what's it called? Like the short game, putting and chipping range. So we go out there and we start hitting balls and my son gets up there. First, first swing, swing in a, in a miss, right? And he looks at me, he starts smiling, goes up again, swing and a miss. Completely unfazed by this, by the way. Then he hits it and he duffs it. He's like, dad, you want to take a few hits? So I go up there, my first hit's perfect. Now remember, I haven't played like in 10 years or something, but it was just beautiful. And I look at him, I have like this cocky grin on my face. And he's like, do it again. Second hit, like just duffed. Third hit, terrible. Fourth hit, I'm like hurting myself now. Fifth hit, slice. Like, and like I'm like getting so mad and so frustrated. I'm like, how is this even fun? And then we keep switching off. He's having a great time. I'm completely miserable. Which leads me to mindset. Because I can imagine that for people starting something like land investing, they can go either one of those two mindsets. And so I want to talk about it. Um, Eric Peterson, what are your thoughts? Oh, wait, I'm sorry, Eric. I didn't want to start with you. We've had this talk. Scott Bossman, what are your <laughs> thoughts? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, for me, it's, it's a few things, right? Um, usually when I take on something new, I like to be excited about that thing. Uh, so your son's excited, obviously. Um, and even though he's he's duffing it here and there, he's he's probably over swinging. He's he's missing here and there. There's obviously something about the game that excites him, and he's got a vision for the future to continue playing that game and maybe get better. That's how it was for me with land investing. So when I have my eyes on something like that that speaks to me, uh, it's all about the action it's all about the reps it's all about the discipline and the frequency with which you uh 
apply yourself to those things. And, you know, you go out there every single day and it's going to go from duffing it and, you know, missing it to eventually connecting uh, uh, more regularly with it. And you're just going to get better and better. But to me, it's all about the action. It's all about showing up. And I think in our, in this business, it's so much about that, right? We all get worried about losing money. Uh, I put all this money toward this piece of land. Uh, I talked to somebody the other day, they own 10 properties. They haven't sold any yet, uh, but they've only been marketing them for like one week and they were all nervous. And I'm like, you have to remember you bought 10 properties at 25 cents on the dollar. Let's do the math here. You invested $10,000 in these properties. You are now sitting on a land portfolio worth $40,000 or more. So it's about perspective in that regard as well. But it's just about the actions. It's about taking the action and putting faith in those actions that it's gonna produce the results down the way. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um, how about you, Zen Master? Uh, well, if I think mindset, I guess probably what would come uh, to me right now is rhythm in our business. I've been talking to a lot of people that uh, I think what happens is when they first come in, they set the expectations too high. So I don't know uh, if that relates to the golf, like thinking you're going to like nail it every time and get it in. And so they have these expectations. I mean, they hear stories too, um, cause I think the magic is there. They hear about, um, maybe they hear Scott Todd's story or your story or one of our stories and they hear about, you know, and so they set these expectations that they need to sell so much land, do so much. And I think that, I don't think I know it leads some people to feeling a bit overwhelmed because they develop these very grand expectations. And I try to tell them, I said, really what I think is important in this business, the mindset you should have is to build a rhythm, a rhythm that can be maintained and then later on scaled. So this is why uh, it's, you know, it's common in the flight school to be taught 20 mailers a day. It's a rhythm. Why not send out a thousand? Well, that's not a very good rhythm, right? It's going to lead to things in the future that are going to be difficult to deal with. So when it comes to setting ads, people are like, well, I'm trying to set up like 10 Facebook accounts. I'm like, well, just start with one, build a rhythm, post an ad, a couple of days later, post another ad, keep. So I think that our business does have all of these rhythms. And I think the expectation you should have is to build a model that you can sort of uh, scale later. But in the beginning, just, just get a rhythm. You have your mailings going out, click, 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 right? And then you're coming back in, you're doing your due diligence, right? You're working the closing, you just, going full cycle. Then when it comes to marketing, you're putting an ad out, you're putting another ad, you develop a process. Maybe you go on and you uh, go into invest in ninjas and you get uh, Eric's uh, air table, follow up boss sort of process and you, and you build a rhythm and maybe it's you doing all of the parts, but it's okay because you're developing a rhythm. So to me, the mindset, uh, my advice for people with, uh, in terms of our business would be to, um, you know, think about more in terms of developing a rhythm in a, in a slow pace, you know, and just just go through make sure the action get done because if you can do them and you can define what those actions are and you can define what the deliverables are and what the positions are within the business that you know then you can build scale so um that's what i think i think that I've, I've just encountered a few people mark recently that they seem overwhelmed and i feel really bad i talked to them I'm like listen you're putting too much pressure on yourself you're thinking that you have to do all of this which is great it'd be like hey i'm gonna get up today do an hour of pilates which i do love and then I'm going to do an, a, a mile jog and then I'm going to ride the Peloton and like, man, what a great day, right? But if you think you can maintain that rhythm every day or three days a week, it's highly unlikely you'll burn out. And so to prevent burnout in this business, develop a rhythm and something that's small and manageable and then grow it. No, I, I, I really, you know, agree with everything you've said. Um, Big Papa, Tate Litchfield, what are your thoughts? Mental fortitude is something that, uh, you got to have, you got to have it to be good at, at just about anything in life, whether it's riding a bike, starting a business or learning golf, right? You got to be able to say, you know what, there's a reason somebody else is better than me at X thing. And that's because they've put in 10,000 hours worth of time to it, right? And if you expect to pick up a golf club, and I, I don't, I've never played golf a day in my life. So I don't even know what the right term and all it hit a hole in one on your first go. I, I think that's probably very unrealistic. Right. right. If I went fly fishing with you, right. and you catch a, you catch a fish every 10 casts or 20 casts. Who do I think I am 
that I've, I've never fly fished that I would catch anything. I mean, you got to pay your dues and, and it's no different than the land business, right? People come into this business and maybe this is partly our fault. We talk about our success and how once your business is up and running, how things just happen. You just sell property. You're just at lunch and it's like, boom, woohoo, I got a down payment. This happens. And it happens honestly, frequently for some of us. And that's really cool. But when we talk about it, we make it seem like, oh, we didn't really do anything to achieve that or to earn that. And that's not the case at all. We've put in the hours, we've come up with the systems, we've done the homework, we've done the hard part ahead of time so that when we are out at lunch and we do get that ding, 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 new property sold, it's almost an expectation, right? It's like, yes, of course we sold a piece of property. Why? Because I'm prepared. Right. I showed up with a game plan. I've got a VA team. They're working. I pay them well. They do their job. So there's a lot of things you can overcomplicate in the business. Right. And uh, it can be as simple as making your processes extremely in depth, extremely complicated. And sometimes the easiest way to train somebody is simply jump on a phone call with them and say, look, here's how I want you to do things. Now, you can always outsource and say, great, I want to outsource it now. I want to have a script read up, written up for this, et cetera, or something else that a lot of people uh, get upset with or, or frustrated with is the offer letter. Yeah, absolutely. LG Pass allows you to edit your own offer letter. Do any of us have an edited offer letter? Probably not, right? And mine's simple. The godfather of land told me this is the one to use, and that's the one I'm using. Mark, you haven't told me to change it, so I haven't changed it. It's my mental fortitude, right? It's like, okay, I'm following the process, so. That's my, no, that's my thoughts on it. Yeah, no, it, it, it's so true. It's so true. Um, the technician, Eric Peterson, what are your thoughts? Well, I think, um, you know, Mark, there's a, there's a short little quote that, that you often cite, and that is, uh, comparison is the thief of all happiness. And, and that's a lot of what I'm hearing as, as we're kind of talking about this idea of mindset. And, you know, I, I think a lot of us are going towards um, new students coming into the business, uh, learning how to do this and, and maybe feeling like um, they can't do it or they haven't had the success that they anticipated as quickly as they anticipated or things of that nature. And I think that just comes down to this idea of comparison, because if you go out in the community, you go to Facebook or you're listening to the podcast and, and like Tate was saying, you know, you hear about someone you know, selling a property on the beach or while they're at dinner or what have you. And, you know, you've got a couple properties in inventory and you, you've had them for two months, three months, and, and you've been unable to sell them. And you start to look around and say, well, why is this not working for me? And I would go back to, um, I guess, you know, relating back to the golf thing. I mean, you can't go out and be a, a professional golfer, right? You could, study books you could you know watch videos all this stuff but without actual practice in real life like you're probably not going to be any good you know one person might be a little better than another naturally but you know the likelihood of, of you being a professional is is pretty much slim to none right so it takes practice you've got to go out there you've got to do the reps as mike was saying you've got to send out your offers you got to put your ads out there on, on Facebook, on Craigslist, on Landmoto. And you've got to reply to those and follow up with those people consistently because it doesn't just fall into your lap most of the time. It takes work and effort and consistent work and effort. And, uh, you know, over time, you can refine those efforts and processes in your, in your business and, and begin to remove yourself from some of that, build systems, delegate, etc., cetera, and, um, you know, really build a business, but it doesn't come overnight. It doesn't come by, you know, just going through the investor's toolkit and being like, all right, I'm a land investor. I'm going to go out and, I don't know, sell a hundred properties this year or whatever. Like it takes work. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Scott Todd, what about you? What do you think? You, think? you know, there's a lot of good advice here, right? Um, but one of the things that always amazes me, and I'm going to go to golf for a minute, and then I'll come back to land. What amazes me is that 
when you're trying to do something, you want to learn how to play golf, no problem. You can look at this all day long. You can go to a golf professional, hire that golf professional to help you refine your swing. Like it's amazing. You go to you go to somebody that this is their professional at this, and guess what? They can tell you like that. Well, if you do this, then this is gonna happen, right? Or this is why you're messing up, or do this instead of that. And then you go to these golf professionals and you listen to them, and then you're like, that's a good idea. I'm gonna start doing it. And then you leave their presence, and then you go to somebody that's on the golf course with you. Another, it'd be like me going to you, right? I hire a, I, I hire a golf professional to teach me how to play golf, and then you and I are out there on the golf course. And guess what? Let's just say that you have a better shot than me on this one. I go, wait a minute, how did you do that? And then you start telling me how you did it, and all of a sudden I'm like, I'm going to try to do it like he did it. And I'm going to ignore what the what the professional told me to do, right? And we see this happen a lot too. And what I mean by that is, we we like there's people here that that do this full time. There are people here that that this is their full time living. Like this is us on this call. And there's others. And if you're going to take advice from somebody, well, then you better take advice from people that actually know what they're doing and not some high handicapper that's worse than you are or want to be like you are. And this happens a lot on the internet. Go, 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 go figure, right? And I've seen situations where, and you see this on some of the other real estate boards a lot, is somebody just posts a lot. They just post, 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 like they have no life. They just post. They may know practically how to do it, but when it comes to execution, they're terrible. So my advice is, listen to what everybody on this call said. Go out and go through the reps. Go slow in the beginning, get your foundation. I always like to say it's a lot like learning how to walk. We all remember how we, how we learned how to walk, right? No, you don't remember? Like we all fell down multiple times and we got back up. And today we walk around like it's no, no big deal. We got it, okay? And that's the same way it is in this business. Go through the motions practice, don't overthink it, trust in the system. And then what will happen is you will start to stand up more on your own. The next thing you know, you'll be running around. Next thing you know, you'll be running 5Ks. But also when somebody says something to you and gives you advice, if, if I were you, I would look at the person who's given me the advice and weigh it. Like somebody else who's doing this full time you know, advice is worth its weight in gold. Somebody that's just posting on the internet or they're they're two months older than you are in this business, be careful. That's all I'm saying. Be careful who you take advice from as well. Yeah, and it's true. When I was out on that course the whole time, uh, I was frustrated and miserable. I kept saying to my son, I need to get, I need to get lessons. I need to get lessons. You know, this is just, you know, not fun. I need to get lessons. And so you're right. Like I need to go to that golf pro and shorten my learning curve, which bring us to our sponsor for the podcast this week, which is flight school. Wouldn't it be great to have Scott Todd as your instructor and take you up that mountain of land vesting quickly, safely, and efficiently 16 weeks. You start building passive income, learn more, go to landgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a call with the Zen master, Mike Zano, or the nightcap OG scott bossman and figure out is this going to be the right path for you to start building passive income on a one-time sale recurring income every single month no renters rehabs renovations or rodents so getting back to that analogy with me on the golf course and my son right next to me doing the exact same thing one of us is miserable one of us is, is joyful and it all comes down to beginner's mind my son had no expectations. He's just happy to be there. He just had this beginner's mind. He knew the more he goes out there, he's going to get better. He didn't have any ego with it. There's no expectations. Where in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh, if Scott Todd were here, he'd be laughing at me. I can't hit the ball. This is miserable. I'd be shooting in the 200s if this were a real, you know, thing. I mean, I kept having all these crazy thoughts. And I, and I literally was sabotaging myself instead of just going out there and being in nature and enjoying time, learning something that is hard 
to do and just having that beginner's mind. So I think what everybody said was, was great, but um, expectations, ego, they can sap the joy out of this business for you if you're new. And if you have the Matt Forbes approach, where I'm just gonna put my head down for the next three years, and I'm just gonna do what these guys tell me to do and see what happens. That's all he did. He had his ups, he had his downs. Three years later, he's, he's kind of at that point. He's, he, he hit it, his goal. And um, he talks about it in the, in the group. Um, that's, that's like, what if I just did that? What if I just went out there? It's like, okay, I'm going to give myself three years. I'm going to get uh, instruction. And I'm going to go out three times a week. And I'm really going to dedicate myself to just enjoying this game. Not a, not a certain score, not beating Scott Todd, just the mental aspect of, of learning something and improving over time. It would have been a completely different experience, right? Anyways, I feel like I'm talking a lot. Tate, what do you think? No, I think it's good. I just, I mean, at the end of the day, everybody, you just gotta, you gotta persevere. It's not easy, right? It, it's, it's hard. It doesn't mean it's complicated, but you got to put in the work. I think that's something that uh, if somebody's telling you it's easy or it's fast or quick, you know, take it with a grain of salt. I really like what Scott Todd said about uh, being careful who you listen to. And, you know, I, I think the best people you can surround yourself with are the ones who are living the lifestyle that you want, right? If you could see yourself in their shoes, pay attention because they got it figured out to a certain degree. doesn't mean they know everything, but, um, be careful who you take uh, your wisdom from. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what I love about the idea of golf? Because right now I can't stand golf. But you know what I love about the idea of it? You it's the fact that on, that on any given shot, if I get lucky enough, I can hit the ball as well as any professional on any given shot. The only difference is I can't do it consistently. But, there, but when you really hit the ball well, you can hit it just as well as any professional. I'll never be able to dunk a basketball, ever, never. But on any given day, I could probably hit the ball as well as any pro could on, on a round. And that's an amazing feeling. And it's the same thing in business. On any given day, you can close a deal just like us. It's just, can you do it consistently? And it, that's, that's the difference between somebody who's an amateur and someone who's a professional is doing it consistently, taking the time and dedicating yourself to that craft or building that business, which is what we're doing, right? We don't want to build another job for ourselves. So I wouldn't call land investing necessarily a craft, but in the beginning it, it is. I mean, Eric, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, to me, um, it just comes down to consistency, right? Consistent effort over time will equal a positive result. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to give the Zen master the last, the last word on mindset because he is the Zen master and I did bring up beginner's mind. <laughs> well, how about I leave us with a quote from Elvis Presley? I know you all love my quotes. Sure. All right. All right. <laughs> You're it says, sing rhythm it? Is... What? Nothing. No, I'm not going to sing it. It says, he says, or he said, huh? Rhythm is something you either have or you don't have, but when you have it, you have it all over. So, you know, this business built, you know, I, I just think that's talking about how that relate to us is put a rhythm into your whole business. And the way to do that is to build it in a way that can be scaled. So why you go into flight school? Cause you build a model that has inside of that model has all of the elements to be scaled. Right. And then in that model, you can build a rhythm and, so then your whole business develops a rhythm and you do that in a micro environment, you push a few deals through and then you just start growing, you just start growing, but you do it at a pace that works for you. Some people, um, they really want to, maybe they don't like their job or they have some imminent, so they may push that rhythm faster than others. Right. But, uh, it's all personal, but you know, just do it in a way that's manageable in a way that, uh, you know, can be replicated day after day, not one time mailing a thousand letters one time is uh, putting out, a hundred ads in a day. It's all, I guess, good. Right. Uh, but if you can't do it consistently, what's the point? You know, like you said, if you go out and have one great shot, but then you never do that again. I mean, what's the point, you know, you want to develop a rhythm and then uh, uh, allow yourself to get, um, you know, 
uh, just getting better and better at uh, what you're doing. So, yeah. Thanks, Elvis. All right. I love it. Does that count as the tip of the week, Eric Peterson? It does. I was thinking it does. That was an excellent tip of the week. I feel like the listeners are not going to accept that. Because it was, it was during the roundtable conversation, and we didn't make that segue. We're at that point in the podcast where we're going to ask Eric Peterson <laughs> for a tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the Art of Passive Income listeners no. to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. Eric or Tate, right, you give us that quote what do you got? I got it. You got it. You got it. Yeah. It better Unless not be a surface it. tip. Unless you guys want it. Eric, you want it? No. No, you can do it. Scott. We'll let you we'll let you have this one. I, that's fine. I was prepared, but that's okay. I I mean, that's fine. You do it. Okay, go ahead. No, 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 no. Scott, I don't want to take away from your thunder. I know you have obviously something really exciting. My tip can wait. Fine, no problem. Go ahead. I was just here to bail out Eric. No, 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 Scott. I don't want to do this to you. Do it. Go ahead. I'll I was just here to bail out Eric, but uh go ahead. <laughs> Remember that time that Tate gave the terrible tip of the week, but we won't rehash that episode. All right, right, because you gave this tip. You just the tip you gave that same week, eight weeks ago. That's right. Yeah. Wow. You know, eight weeks ago. Because I've been doing it for eight I weeks. The mic on tape. All right. Wow. Check out slab.com, guys. Slab.com. S L A B.com. Why? Because what better way to take knowledge from here, your brain, and put it into a knowledge base that your team can work off of? It's all about taking information from your brain and putting it in helping other people's brain, right? Like that's what teams do. So if you're struggling to come up with a knowledge based system for your business, check out slab.com. Wow. This is great. I hate when Scott Todd gives an amazing tip. That's cool, fantastic. Actually. That is a really good tip. Um, even if you didn't like our content today, it's worth it just for the tip of the week. Uh, slab.com. Fantastic. Well, I want to, you know, thank the listeners and remind them that the only way that we're going to be able to, you know, put Eric on the spot and then have Tate or Scott bail him out is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe, you got to rate, you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you the $97 wholetailing course for free. Um, Eric, are we good? We are great. Dude, buddy. We're excellent. Tate? I love it. Zen Master? Very good. Scott Todd? Good. All right, let's do this. One, two, three. Let's let, let freedom, freedom, freedom ring. 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 Not bad. Not bad. So, um, Scott, are you taking golf lessons? Um, n no, however, not currently. However, I have thought about it and, um, you know, man, there's a, uh, there's a guy, see, you have a little bit of advantage for me. Like if you Google like best golf co coaches in America, there's like three of them right there in Scottsdale, like literally three, like you could probably be there in minutes from your house. Right. Right. The best ones in Florida are a little bit of a drive for me. And I'm like, you know, I can go get a local guy, but you want the best. Like you don't learn the fast, go get the best. That's what I'm thinking. So I might have to uh, explore that and really make an investment in it. No, I, I definitely want to start doing it. Only, only, not even just for, not that I love golf, because I've never really loved it. Um, because my frustration tolerance is so low, but just the mental aspect of it and to see like, can I increase my frustration tolerance? Can I, you know, just quiet my mind on these shots? And ever since that terrible experience with my son, I've been meditating now an hour a day as opposed to <laughs> 20 minutes and just being more calm, more at peace because clearly, you know, something ego in my ego just went off the rails and really just um, took what should have been an idyllic uh, time with my son and, and derailed it 
and it was all about me. It was just not great. Um, to you know, just to watch these thoughts and like, this is not fun. It's it's funny because uh, I always joke with my daughter like, well, in one year I can uh, join the the senior golf tour, professional golf tour. So I tell her like, I got a year to practice, and she's like, Dad, you're never gonna make it. And so then, you know, the other day I came home playing golf. She's like, how'd you do? I'm like, I'm not sure I'm gonna make the senior tour. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but there there is something about it, like, you know, Tate and fly fishing, golf, yeah. um, you know, Boston and being on the lake, uh, you know, I guess fighting fires is nature, you know, Eric's in, you know, in a beautiful part of Tennessee, like, we're all just kind of doing stuff in nature and getting out, um, which is nice, especially during COVID. It's kind of, it's a COVID safe activity. I thought you were going to say that Eric got out and ate ribs or something. Yeah, I was waiting for that too. Yeah. Come on, man. You know what? We, let's give Eric some props. How much money did you raise, Eric? Uh, almost 600 bucks. I think just under 600. Yeah, so not bad, but how, how was that bike race? Was it a race or just you just it, went out? Well, it was supposed to be like a big giant group ride, but with COVID, they, they kind of did away with that. They were supposed to, everybody was supposed to ride to Lynchburg, Tennessee to go to Jack Daniels and then come back the next day. Um, they decided not to do that. So the team I signed up with just did a local ride. You could also just ride yourself or ride um, inside or something like that. But, but I did this group ride with uh, the team I joined with and, and we rode 60 miles on Saturday. For wow. Do you, do you feel like the Peloton? Research. Yeah, for MS is amazing, amazing uh, charity event. But um, did you feel like the Peloton prepared you? I think it did because I didn't do any outdoor riding prior to that. Um, so the first 40 miles was actually not bad. Um, the last maybe five miles were a little bit tough because I've never ridden 60 miles on the Peloton. The most I've done is maybe 30. Um, so, but it was good. It was a little sore yeah. the next day, a little tired, but it was good. Yeah. So Tate, do you just internally laugh when you hear 60 miles? Like, how does it, what's your reaction to that? <laughs> Bravo, man. That's good. I'm all about more people on bikes. I mean, I don't care. 60 miles is a long way to pedal. And uh, I was telling Eric, sitting down on a saddle for three, four hours, that, I mean, that takes courage. That's not pleasant. So uh, good on him. And uh, hopefully next year he's doing the 100 version, the century. We'll see. Okay. It's for a good cause. I love it. Yeah, it's cause. great. All right. And on that, um, we'll see everybody next week. Thanks, everybody. All right.